This red folding chair that I just sat in is what I've been using for the past two years at my computer desk. This was a loaner from my old roommate, and while it obviously was functional as a chair, ergonomically, this is not a good idea at all for long-term use. Although, to be honest with you, I've never really actually had a properly good ergonomic chair at my desk ever. Probably the best chair that I've ever used was one of those pleather executive office chairs for like a hundred bucks or so from a Walmart or something like that. So when I started shopping around for a properly good chair that didn't demolish my wallet while also giving me what I was looking for in terms of comfort and overall productivity while I'm at my computer, the autonomous Mayo chair came across my web browsing screen. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on it to give it a shot. Now in the process of reviewing this chair, I'm also gonna be discussing the buying process and the customer service experience I had with them because I did get a fair bit of interaction with their customer service team because of an odd issue that I encountered with my Mayo chair. And this is gonna be a dense one, boys and girls, so buckle up, this is probably gonna be a longer video than I'm anticipating. All right, so to start off with, the base cost of the Mayo chair is about $140 or so. That gets you the base chair, not the leg rest, not the head rest. Those are optional features that I tacked onto mine. So after shipping, my chair came to around $200 US. So keep that in mind as I discuss some of the build quality and feature sets with this chair. Now the first thing that most of you know Notice immediately, very straightforward, minimalist styling here. This is not a gamer chair. This is focused on ergonomics and making sure that you're comfortable and productive at your desk, whatever it is you're doing. Now, as far as the construction of the chair is concerned, it uses mostly plastics on the outside, all really high quality stuff. This chair feels like it's built like a brick house. It's also using this really nice mesh material for the backrest and the headrest, which means your back and your head aren't gonna get all hot and sweaty after an extended sitting session in one of these. And I can attest that is confirmed to be true because I've sat in this thing for like eight hours straight already, and it was a largely very comfortable experience. The back for this chair does also have some lumbar support uh, built into it. It is adjustable up and down a few inches. I do admittedly wish you could lock this in place though, because I find that over an extended period of time, uh, I still have this bad habit where I want to slump in my chair a little bit and the lumbar rest winds up shifting down or up a little bit, depending on how I'm wiggling in the chair. It's not really a huge deal because it's easy enough to adjust, but that is something that I would like to see in a future revision of the Mayo chair. Okay, I am recording audio. That's good. Now, the only adjustment that the lumbar support does not offer is outward adjustment. So there is a distinct possibility that depending on the nature of how you need to sit in your chair, you may need to bolster that a little bit more. For my purposes, however, as someone that's suffered through several car accidents and a weightlifting accident that have left permanent damage to my back, I found that to be pretty adequate for my needs. Now the seat cushion here, was a little bit of a point of contention for me at first, and to a small degree, it kind of still is. It's plenty broad in all aspects of its dimensions, and it is very amply padded with a really nice fabric on it that's easy to clean and actually leaves me feeling not quite as warm sitting in the chair as something like with like a leatherette or a pleather kind of material. The main issue that I had with the seat cushion here is it's exceptionally firm when you first take it out of the box. It does break in over time, and over the course of about the past month or so that I've been using it, the cushion has gotten a lot better for me to sit on. But when I first started using this chair, it admittedly was a little painful after about two to three hours of sitting in the chair. Thankfully, I have a height adjustable desk as well, so I can alternate between sitting and standing like you should anyway. But just know that if you're not a fan of firm seat bottoms, this will take a bit of a break-in period before it starts to feel a little bit more comfortable to you. Now, one other thing that I do wish was present here for the seat bottom itself was angle adjustment front and back. You don't get that here. And I find that in certain use case scenarios for the chair, that would have actually been a helpful point of adjustment for me to have. Now, while we're on the topic of the seat itself, weight capacity here is about 250 pounds max. I, for reference, am about five foot nine, 175-ish pounds right now, and I have an inseam of 30 
for my pants. So just to give you a bit more reference for the length of my legs as well. So the chair works fine for someone of my frame and build, but if you're a taller or broader person, you may wanna check out the Ergo Chair 2, which has a 100 pound higher weight capacity and a lot more granular adjustment throughout the chair. And actually down in the video's description, I went ahead and linked the Epos Vox review that he did of the Ergo Chair 2. Really solid review and as far as I can tell, definitely another worthy contender in the realm of ergonomic desk chairs. Now the last core feature for the chair itself is of course the armrests here. They're really well built. Uh, minimal play in the armrests. I like that. They feel really, uh, really strongly built. If these are distracting for you or you prefer not to use armrests on your chair, you don't have to install these. It's not part of the frame. It's not an essential thing to get the chair to work. And you do get pretty decent granularity with height adjustment, but there is no uh, additional positional adjustments for the angle or the, um, the, the depth or shallowness of how far out the armrests are retracted. Now I touched on this a little bit earlier. There is an option set that you can get for this chair. So if you just order the chair itself and get that shipped to you in any color, as long as it's black and gray, you will not get the headrest or the leg rest option. But for another 40 bucks, they toss those in as as well. Now the headrest just attaches to the back of the chair with two pre-drilled screw holes and it I mean the headrest does a great job. It's got a nice range of adjustment up and down and it has tilting action to it so you can get it positioned right where you need it to for maximum comfort for your head. The only issue that I have with it is there's a bit too much play uh, for the stem of the headrest that goes into its housing that mounts to the chair. It's, it's not that you actually feel it in practical use. It just doesn't feel quite as premium as I feel like something like this should feel. Even considering that this is on the lower end of the pricing spectrum, um, I just would like to see that play minimized a bit. Just to, again, it's, it's, it's the perception of quality here. Now the leg rest that's in the bottom of the chair here, uh, it's, it basically just slides in and out. Again, there's a bit of an issue with excessive play, probably from manufacturing tolerances, just to make sure that it's going to fit in all versions of the Mayo chair. Uh, also considering that not everyone is going to order the options package for this. The main issue that I had with the leg rest, however, wasn't granularity of adjustment. You can get it adjusted pretty much wherever you want it to lengthwise. The main issue here is that the way the leg rests actually angle themselves, it almost feels like it puts excessive pressure on my kneecaps when I'm sitting in this chair. And the fact that you can't alter the, the tilt of the leg rest itself, and the fact that it's a very, it, like very padded, leg rest. It's just, there's not enough adjustment there. It also feels like it's maybe a little bit too close in, like it, it's too narrow. I feel like if I would have been able to widen the leg rest a little bit more and get just a little bit more distance between my legs, I probably would have been a lot more comfortable here. Also, bit of a missed opportunity here for the leg rest. Why didn't they use an open frame design with the mesh like they did for the headrest and similarly for the backrest material here? Personally, I feel like that probably would have been a better option because it would have been more cohesive in terms of the look of the chair. It would have been a lighter part to ship and honestly, it probably would have been a little bit more comfortable. Again, it's a nitpicky thing because the leg rest does still work and if I can get myself positioned the right way, it's fine, but that's not my favorite option. That's the one that I would most like to see go back to the drawing board if I'm being perfectly honest. Oh, oh, before I forget, the casters on this thing are butter smooth. Rolling this chair into position just feels really solid and really nice. They did a great job with these. Now, as far as the points of articulation go in total, you have the height and angle of the headrest. You have an ang you have the angle for the backrest, which does actually allow you to get uh, fairly horizontal in the chair. It's not like laying flat in a bed, but you do get a pretty broad range of adjustment. But there are only three locking positions for the backrest. 
For the armrests, you do of course get that granular adjustment up and down that we were talking about, but you don't get swivel and you don't get out and inward mo motion of the armrests. You do also get height adjustment, but for the seat bottom itself, you do not get tilt adjustment. You also don't get the option to slide it further out or back depending on the length of your legs. So if you're an exceptionally tall or an exceptionally short person, that may also be a little bit of an issue for you. And then of course you can extend the leg rest out or in depending on the length of your legs but again your individual body shape and leg size and all the other dimensions of you may or may not impact your ability to comfortably use the leg rest. Now, before I get into the final opinions that I have on this chair, I wanna to touch on the buying experience and the customer service experience that I had with Autonomous. When I purchased this chair, the website wasn't necessarily super clear on when the chair would get delivered to me and it indicated that they may or may not have existing stock of the chair. So I personally, I was a little shocked when I placed the order and saw that there was a one month lead time on this chair. And then because of a shipping issue on the end of the shipping company, it wound up getting pushed out another week or so before I actually got the chair. So in total, it was about five weeks of wait time for me to get my autonomous Mayo chair. When I reached out to customer service to ask them why that kind of lead time might exist, they basically told me that this particular chair has been extremely popular and therefore has been on back order for quite some time. Website adjustments have been made in recent history to give the buyers a better idea of whether or not they have actual stock on these and what the most reasonable lead time would be on these chairs. Remember, Autonomous doesn't just sell to individual consumers. There are B2B accounts that exist with them where certain businesses will wind up buying several hundred chairs at a time. So when you're buying something from Autonomous, just keep in mind there is the possibility that a big business order may have swept up all of the existing inventory that they have, and it's gonna take time to get it back in stock. Spoiler alert, it's worth the wait. Now, the only real issue that I had with the autonomous Mayo chair itself was when I went to go assemble this thing when I took delivery of it, it didn't have the directions in the box. Now, this chair isn't exactly difficult to put together, so the likelihood of me having not been able to do this without the directions, pretty minimal to be perfectly honest, but they still should have been there. All it took was a quick call to their customer service team, which I actually wound up dealing with the same person throughout my entire experience. And all I had to do was explain that I just took delivery of my Mayo chair, there were no directions, couldn't find them online, all they asked for was my email address and they got them to me immediately. And I was able to move forward with the installation with no problem. So Kat, if you're watching this, thank you for being an awesome customer service rep. And sorry that I'm a little bit of a demanding customer at the best of times. <laughs> Seriously though, great job from the customer service team with my experience. I'm really hoping that anyone else that interacts with anyone else on the autonomous customer service team has the same experience that I did because that was awesome. Now, admittedly, I did notice at, some, at one point during my search that I was able to find the first gen ergo chair directions in a PDF document on a link that looked like it went to the autonomous website but in browsing around, it couldn't really find any links to the directions anywhere. According to Kat, what may have happened was at some point they did have direct links to the directions on each of the product landing pages, but after a website upgrade or two, I think the webmasters may have forgotten to re-embed those links. Whether or not that's the case, the only thing I would recommend there is if it wasn't a thing before, please make the directions available in a link. I think that would be a tremendous help that way in case something like this does happen again, the customer doesn't have to bother the customer service team with it. They can just go to the website on the landing page for the product they bought, click a link, and there's your directions right there. So let's get to my conclusions on this whole autonomous experience that I've had. As far as the chair goes, the chair is a great deal. It's extremely comfortable. The build quality is top notch on it. 
yes, there's a few little quirks here and there, but it's nothing that I personally would consider to be a deal breaker. Uh, again, with the accessories, you don't have to get those with the chair. They are bolt-on affairs, but I admittedly would like to see the tolerances tightened up on those a little bit so that it feels like a more quality piece of office furniture. In general, I feel like this is an exceptionally well-balanced product. It gets you into the world of ergonomically sound office furniture without demolishing your wallet in the process. And if you decide you like something like this, there are other higher end options for you to step up to that have even greater degrees of granular adjustment. As far as Autonomous' customer service is concerned, top notch. Really good experience that I had with them. And yeah, they rank up there with guys like Fractal Design for me in terms of some of the best customer service I've ever gotten after the sale. The only other negative experience that I had was the buying process itself. But again, you gotta expect lead times with products like these guys. And from my personal experience, it's worth the wait. <sighs> All right, that covers everything. If you stuck it out to the end of this video, thank you so much. That is that is tremendous. You, you're, you're the real MVP. And hit the thumbs up button if you liked what you saw. Get subscribed for more content like this. And I'll catch you guys next time. So take it easy. How dare you cough off screen? <coughs> How fucking dare you? I do what I want. <laughs>